Welcome to Off the Press. It is the program where we take a look at the National Day list and try to make sense of it as much as time would allow us to do. We will give in our best. And so we have a couple of papers to take a look and review this morning. I won't be alone. I'll be joined virtually by our public affairs analyst, architect Nya Etok, who will be joining us from Uyo. Good to have you, sir, this morning. Always a pleasure to be with you. Great. Thank you. How are you today? Extremely good, in spite and despite. <laughs> Very good to well. hear that. All right, let's begin now. We have a couple of papers, but we will begin with the Punch newspaper already displayed. Borrowing, give us option to China. Amechi tells National Assembly, and that story is on page 23 of the Punch newspaper. Current security system not working, NLC tells the federal government, and that story is also on page 10, that um, what bad there. Magu ordered my detention uh, after I demanded 763 million naira legal fee. That's according to a senior advocate of Nigeria. The story is on page 2. And then we have Boko Haram opens fire on Borno's uh, governor's convoy. Well, in the news, we did not hear that it's Boko Haram. They hadn't confirmed, but well, the story is on page uh, 23, page 13, rather, um, of the Punch newspaper. So there's a confirmation, apparently, it looks. Um, Afeni Fere Ohaneze, uh, Middle Belt Forum, replied Dora, Mam and Dora, on 2023 comment. Now, your uncle didn't, didn't emerge president in 2015 on competence, but zoning, that story is on page two. President's nephew statement exposes Northerner's plot, says the uh, Middle Belt Forum. Zoning not in the constitution, it's party's affair, Arewa Consultative Forum says. And then we have a picture story also there. Um, it's hard to know what's going on there, really. Well, has to do with transportation as much as I can see. Passengers, I believe, uh, somewhere in Lagos. Ondo Deputy Governor dumps PDP and moves to ZLP. Okay, that story is on page 16. Now, Ogun schools resume August the 4th, churches and mosques August the 14th to open tentatively. Uh, the story is also on page 13. And then we have bandits killed 13 family members and one other in Kogi State. Horrible. The story is on page 9. And the federal government releases schedules for the West African Senior Certificate uh, Examination, NECO and NAPTEB exams as well. The story is on page 9. We had this on the news. The dates are announced as well. And on page four, we have that sort of story again. Man rapes 20-year-old girl um, with Down syndrome in Ogun. This is horrible, isn't it? Four robbers, policeman killed in Oyo community bank robbery uh, in page, on page 13, I believe. Uh, this story seems to have all kinds of everything. May I now hand over to our public affairs analyst to begin from where you want to, sir? Okay, um, lots to talk about, uh, a whole lot, okay. like a potpourri, lots. Um, but one, two, three things really catch my, my attention. The first is um, the China deal and the, um, the Honorable Minister for Transportation asking the National Assembly to give um, him an option to China. And then we talk in terms of um, saying that our current security network is not working. And that um, coming from the, um, okay. the NLC, telling the uh, federal government that the current situation, the security system is not working. OK, there. And then we also have that of um, issue of zoning, which mm -hmm. is the main the, the main banner or the banner header for, for the paper. There are other things like um, the Ondo deputy governor, and of course the very, very uh, uh, distasteful issue of rape, all those things come together. But let me start with um, that of the China deal. A lot has been said about this China deal, and I have taken time to really listen to people when they have conversations, and some things really jump out at me and bother me. 
and it comes to our understanding and concept of government and governance. It, 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 there's nothing wrong in borrowing. There's absolutely nothing wrong in borrowing. When you do analysis of capacity to borrow, that's not really the issue. They, if you if you if if you if you come to my bank account, if you are my 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 my, my banker or my account officer, and you realize that there is say five hundred thousand in my account, you know, even if you are to make an investment of fifty thousand, there are certain fundamental questions that you are going to ask yourself. Mm. Number one, this investment. Does it have the capacity to repair itself? So it does, it's not whether I have money or I don't have money. Number two, what are the conditions? And if it's a good investment, and there, there are certain things that will make me leave a good investment. One of such things is the conditions attached. For instance, you get to discover that this investment is going to run for maybe one year and they are charging me 5% per week. Common sense tells you that the interest factor is going to compound such that I'm going to run into problems somewhere along the line. Now come to the specific China deal. Number one, what are the conditions? I'm, you know, I was listening to somebody, I think last night or somewhere, saying that the little prints are so tiny that you can't, it takes a lot for you to go. I, I found such a lame explanation. <laughs> Before you commit a country, you must, of necessity, go through painstakingly, not you as a minister, because, I mean, you, are not a, you may not be a lawyer, but there must be a legal team. There must be an investment team. There must be a political team. There must be different teams that analyze any external borrowing and give you adequate information. For instance, if there's a clause that says, should you default, we will be at liberty to take over any of your national assets, commensurate with whatever you are owing. Now, I expect that the attorney general or the legal team must have looked at our constitution and see what it says about our sovereignty and the right of anybody, any country, any institution to come into Nigeria and take over any national asset. And if such a clause does appear anywhere, no matter how juicy you know, that offer is, I expect that there will be, it will be a no-no deal. The reason is simple. You cannot go against the Constitution. Now, that said, this China deal and borrowing, borrowing, borrowing. Do we have a tradition, a culture of managing the funds that we borrow such that it goes to the exact purpose for which it was intended? Secondly, do we have a culture or a tradition of ensuring that every dime that we borrow is so deployed that we have value for money? All these have been lacking in virtually all the external borrowings that we get into. As a result, we find out that we exit the borrowing club, and then before you can say, Jack, we are right back at it. Mm -hmm. And it seems we let's just borrow, 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 borrow. And the worst part of it is the mentality. We only have four years. Let's do what we can. Let's be seen. Let's be known. The problem comes after we have left. Those who come after us should be able to watch it. At this point, what is reasonable to do is for those of us that are not tenured, and I'm talking about Office of the Citizen of, of, of Nigeria, for us to ensure that any borrowing is such that we do not mortgage the future of our children. So that is one area I, I would want to spend so much time on and then... Right. Uh, maybe time for us to move on because yeah. we can't deal on that alone. Correct. There is this issue of yes. Sorry, you want to say something? No, please do go ahead. I'm affirming that yes, we can move on to another. The, yes, the issue of security is one that bothers me. NLC has come to say this is not working. I don't know if it's to prove a point. You see, when you become a president, we, we give the impression that a president is a monarch who has all power, all authority, and the Constitution 
gives that impression. But a president is actually the chief servant of the people. Correct. That is why government is made up of three arms. One of the arms of government is called the legislature. And one of the core functions of the legislature is representation. Representation. What is representation? It is ensuring that the expectation of the people is brought to the fore. Okay? Now, if the National Assembly representing the people, look, the executive is just the implementing arm of what the people want as articulated by the National Assembly, while the judiciary is there to make sure that nobody runs foul of the law. So if you just look at it, it's about the National Assembly representing the people, articulating, that's why they oversight the budget. They are like the main people that take care of the budget because in the budget, they ensure that the wishes, the aspirations, the expectations of the people are articulated. Hmm. Now, the executive are the implementing arm and then this Jewish, uh, the, uh, legislature, again, has a second arm, which is called oversight, in which case the expectations of the people that we have articulated, are you implementing it properly? The people of Nigeria say we are not safe. We are not happy. We are not okay. We are being killed daily. Look at what's going on in Southern Kaduna. It's a narrative that we could spend a whole day on. And then the National Assembly, in their representation, you know, function, have come to the floor of the house and said, the people say that your security architecture is not working, sir. Could you please change it? That's the much they can do. Now, you look at them and tell them that's not your function. That's not your responsibility. That's not your prerogative. You cannot instruct me. You cannot order me. Sir, they were not instructing or ordering you. They were putting forward the minds of the people. And you, you need to know that it is, it, is, it is a tripartite working relationship where it's, you, have, you, you could even just be called first among equals. The judiciary is government. The legislature is government. The executive is government. Though in Nigeria, we tend to think that it is the executive that is government. No, government has three arms. And each of these three arms must respect the other. And they must understand their functions. And if the representatives of the people have come to say, this is what the people say, your work is to say to hell with the people or to say, so, uh, okay. But now we are having service chiefs that Maybe to prove a point, I don't really know if that's really necessary. Hmm. Mr. President just doesn't want to hear. And I want to appeal to Mr. President that the time he has is very short. It's better he listens. You can change the service teams, at least if to let the people know that you've listened to them. Because you can never be effective as a president if you don't carry the people along. It is absolutely important that people feel that you listen to them. Right. This is not a monarchy. This is not a dictatorship. Right. It's a presidency. Okay. In the interest of time, I'm afraid we'll I have hope. To, in the interest of time, I'm afraid we'll have to move on to the next paper. Uh, I'm sure that you, yeah. have, you can share your thoughts uh, in the next paper. So we'll take Trayvon now. Uh, the Federal Executive Council okays the release of 8.4 billion naira counterpart fund for Siemens electricity deal on page four, as Nigeria and US sign agreement. Lagos lifts ban on boarding activities on page eight. NECO exams begin October the 5th. Common interest exam holds on October the 17th. I think these dates are really important for students to take note of, and of course, parents and teachers. Gunmen kill uh, 14 in Kogi community, 13 from one family. That's so sad and heartbreaking on page 26. 70 political parties submitted nominations for Undo governorship election, according to INEC. And that story is on page 25. I wouldn't receive Salah homage, says Buhari. <laughs> uh, and Ogun reopens worship centers August the 14th. That's on page uh, 6. 
3,443 applied for a Motecon job in Ekiti. Interesting, on page 22. Uh, cut workers' salary, prepare for anarchy. Labor wants uh, the government on page 6 as well. And says um, 450 Naira per dollar exchange rates, criminal uh, conspiracy against Nigerians. And then we have the picture from the holy site, I believe, Hajj there. Presidency sends EFC seasonal heads back to uh, police on page two. Suspected Boko Haram members attack Borno's, uh, Borno governor's convoy on page two as well. Account for 800 billion naira recovered from alleged looters. PDP tells APC and the Buhari government on page two. Um, yeah, World Bank approves $500 million for girls' secondary education in Ikiti, Kano, Kaduna, four other states on page six. That's a bit of good news. And that will be it. I hand over now to you. Uh, see where you want to begin. Over to you, sir. Well, thank you. Um, lots, lots. Again, you talk in terms of the um, the power, mm. humongous mm. amount of money again, yep. and then um, boarding schools to go back to school, and then um, recovered loot, and then the World Bank for girl education. These are all interesting topics one would want to look at. But let's start with the, the, the money that has been approved for power. Now that's good, we need power. But I think that before they move forward, they should do an interrogation, an introspection. We have spent money like this in the past and we had no value for money. This money that we are about to start to deploy again, mm -hmm. where were the mistakes? Now, Siemens, luckily for us, is a company that is well known within the subsector. And um, if the federal government has okayed a $8.4 billion as counterpart fund, and I like the word that is counterpart fund, because the concept of counterpart funding is that you, don't, you are not just coming to do a contract. You are coming to say, I believe in this project, I'm putting in something, then you are giving a counterpart you know, funding to it. I want to see the milestones that are put in place. And I want to see this deal put before the Nigerian public. There's too much of secrecy in the things we do. Right. And because of that, there's too much deals inside it. Incidentally, the, the so-called um, you know, external agencies have learned how to re you know, relate with Nigerians. They know that, I mean, certain parts before your deal can fly, you've got to be able to grease the palms of those in power. Now, I don't want to pass any comment on that, but for goodness sake, for whatever is worth, can you just let us see the one that we ought to see? Can you give us what the timelines, you know, when you have a project, there are certain things that make a project. Apart from defining and then bringing out all the variables, there is only part before your deal can fly, you've got to be able to grease the palms of those in power. Now, I don't want to pass any comment on that, but for goodness sake, for whatever is worth, can you just let us see the one that we ought to see? Can you give us what the timelines, you know, when you have a project, there are certain things that make a project. Apart from defining and then bringing out all the variables, there is always the concept, the, the aspect of timelines. You can't undertake a project without timelines attached. You know what you want to achieve per time and then the payment scheduling. Even the payment scheduling will now let you know how your money is released. For, for instance, this 8.4 billion, should it be released at one tranche? What is the work to be done? Can all the money be released at once in the month of January? Or is there an amount you want to do that is needed for January and what is needed for February and what is needed for March? Or are you moving this money into an escrow account so that these people are not bothered that when the time comes for to deploy any cash that they are going to be at once? Can you, can you put the, the, these are the things that you just move 8.4 billion and leave it to the man. And part of that money, a good part, like if you want to under, undertake a project, the preliminaries might take a long time, depending on the project. And by the time you deploy to site, it's probably about eight months, sometimes a year after. And then the money that you have released is money that could have been better managed such that, you know, you can even put in an interest yielding account, escrow account, 
that allows you to make something instead of just pushing it across to the people. And it also makes sure that at any given point in time, you can, like the Americans would say, cut your losses. Yeah. So I do not know how they are managing this particular project. And I think that project managers in Nigeria should be availed of the details so that they can give their opinion and then we'll have a governance that is um, more focused. Mm -hmm. If you come to um, recovered loot, you know, it's, 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 I, I don't know the word to use. If you have collected this amount of money, isn't it just ethical mm -hmm. that you should let us know how these monies have been deployed? Why this secrecy? I look forward to, you know, you see, the, the best way to commit crime is to introduce darkness. Right. Light is the worst enemy of crime. So secrecy is the twin brother of darkness. Any government that thrives in secrecy is a government that is primed for corruption. That's just as simple as possible. So if this government wants to fight corruption, one of the cardinal objectives or uh, what, one of the things that they, they really set out as an agenda is transparency, openness, accountability. And so far, even the amount of money collected, if you collect what EFCC says from what Minister of Finance says, from what the um, information minister says, You'll be shocked at the disparity. You'll be shocked at the yawning gap between the figures. So the question is, who really has the figures? The right and figure. why this level of, of secrecy? It's for a government that is coming on the platform of anti-corruption, fighting corruption as one of its three cardinal points. Mr. President really, really, really at this point has to, I don't want to use a hard word. I don't want to say wake up because that could imply that he's been sleeping. But Mr. President just has to please know that we have gotten to a point where we are starting to lose confidence. <laughs> that could be an understatement. But like you would always say, time will not allow us. Yeah. I want to commend World Bank and the area of girl-child education. And if they have given this amount of money, whosoever are the managers of these funds, let them please deploy them, especially the North. I think that as at today, let me even say this, and that will shock, when the North keep clamoring for uh, governance, like we, we found in the other paper, in the first paper, mm -hmm. they're not even... They're, there are two classes, there are two sets of people, there are two sets of not northerners. The very first are the elders who have held that region to ransom. And only they and themselves, and they have abused religion to the end that they want us to believe that they, 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 the, the religion has set up such a structure where the, the big man amasses the wealth and then they go ahead to give a salaka or whatever they give to the little people. Now that has to stop because now you have so many of the young people from the North. Recently, I was honored by the youth of the 19 Northern states and they called me their headmaster. And it bothers me that I cannot help these young people because of the governance structure. I think that we may have to come to a point. I, I, I notice I'm frozen. I hope I'm still being yeah, heard. Yeah, Am I you. being heard? Yeah, yeah, please. Okay, thank you. Talk. Okay, great, great. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that, and I'm, that the youth may be better off in the North in the hands of a non northerner Look at what President Jonathan tried to do with our Marjorie education. Look at the future of the world. There's a global trend. Education, education, education. Our Marjorie system has to be, you know, changed 
And you look at the cutoff mark for admission into, into Unity schools, it's an insult on the intellect of the Northern youth. It's an insult, I say it, on the int because these are people, I've had them, I attended a Unity school. The Northerners oh, are bright, they are intelligent, now. they are resourceful. But we, the leaders, want to give the impression that these people are not okay. They are. You are giving one side of the country 200 and something as cut off mark, and you are giving another part eight, ten. And they are the bright. You find the girls in the north. I did my youth service in my degree, Ramat Polytechnic. I'm afraid we have to wrap now. <laughs> I know you have a lot of stories to tell us, but yes, uh, time is not, it's not at all on our side today. Um, so we would have to wrap it there. Thank you so very much. Uh, we hope that we'll continue this conversation on other platform and invite you in for other programs to express your thoughts more. Thank you so very much, sir, for your time. And do My pleasure. Out there. You. All right. And that's how we wrap it on Off the Press. Time is never enough on this program. But we continue Monday to Friday. The time is 8.30 a.m. here on Plus TV Africa. And my name is Amaka Okoye.